Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, I don't know why it's taken me this long to actually watch this film but then I haven't watched a lot of uh, Disney animated movies either so oh this one is really really popular and uh, I think it's beloved by a lot of fans of the of animated films especially uh, I've been aware of this movie since I think around 2009 2010 and I've been meaning to watch it for the last several years uh, I am aware of about the uh, in fact I've, I've been aware mainly for the last few years about the uh, that you know the sequence of when they show him uh, being becoming a widower by how sweet and sad it is and uh, that's the main thing that I actually recall about this film and I don't know again I don't know why it's taken me such a long time because uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by how much I love this film uh, it's very endearing as I said so we are talking about Up which is a uh, a comedy drama animated film directed sorry produced by Pixar animated studios and released by Walt Disney Pictures and was directed by Pete Docter uh, and Bob Peterson produced by Jonas Rivera and it stars the voice of Ed Asner who passed away a couple of years ago Christopher Plummer also passed away a couple of years ago and Jordan Nagai who is no longer an actor is what I understand and uh, the voice of Bob Peterson as well so uh, I'm not going to go to the entire story since it's very very popular but yeah, a few things I just point out a few things about it uh, I love the fact about that old type of uh, adventurer safari uh, you know looking for exotic locales looking for exotic animals that kind of a beginning of the thing by uh, when they, they talk about uh, the explorer Charles Munz who was voiced by Christopher Plummer and the fact that the 10 year old Carl uh, Fredrickson idolized uh, Munz and wanted to be a lot like him and uh, you know he meeting uh, Ellie another 10 year old but a girl at this time uh, months fan they both uh, become friends that's very sweet to actually see and uh, you know they grow up together after that they get they fall in love they get married uh, they have the miscarriage I think she's not able to have kids after that but it's very 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 s sad and sweet the way they actually show that them growing old together she she falling ill <laughs> and then she passes away and Carl is, uh, you know, uh, on his own right now. That's actually very, very, I don't know. It's like it, it moves you. It kind of moves you quite a bit. So I guess extremely well done uh, sequence by the uh, producers of the movie. And the director, of course. So he wants to, uh, he's basically on his own. Uh, he has this tift between uh, people who are trying to, uh, you know, make, uh, demol they want to sell his old house, get his old house, buy it from him, and then demolish it and make the, uh, uh, you know, redevelop that particular area. He refused to give his house up. Unfortunately, uh, a little misunderstanding and uh, a tift with you know, one of them, he accidentally uh, attacks a person who's come there uh, and uh, a, a construction worker, I believe. And uh, well, they deem him to be a menace at his age, so he's going to go, he's supposed to be going to go in an assisted living facility. Uh, but as a balloon salesman for such a long time, he has got a huge collection of balloons, and overnight he uses them all, blows them up, and the house takes off. And his plan is he's going to go and live in, uh, drop the house on uh, Paradise Falls, which is in South America. I don't think they actually mentioned which area of South America, but it is in it is in South America, and he wants to do that as his last loving act for his now deceased wife. But unfortunately for him, this young boy uh, named uh, what's his name uh, Russell, who is a wilderness explorer, and he is actually searching for his final merit badge for assisting the elderly. He accidentally becomes a stowaway. And uh, they have to, they land in 
a storm blows them off to South America and they land uh, near Paradise Falls. So they are unable to actually go, uh, back, get back into the house because it's floating a little bit. But uh, Carl is, is tied up with some bows or something, uh, so it's not floating off it. So they still they walk with the, with the house, you know, floating uh, like it, basically like buoyant. And of course, then that's the adventure begins. They meet, of course, Kevin. <laughs> Turns out to be a girl, but that exotic uh, giant flightless bird. Doug, the gold retriever. So this is what. I've been looking at in some clips. I didn't actually know much about this. I know he's in this film, but I didn't really know and it's, it's really funny. The character of Doug is absolutely amazing. He's got this collar, like all the other dogs that you see uh, that Bunce has got, uh, that will translate his thoughts into human speech. Brilliantly voiced. And uh, of course, my, I'm very partial to golden retrievers. I love a lot of dogs. Love, I love dogs, I love a lot of dog breeds, you know. Labradors, Dalmatians, German Shepherds, Corgis, uh, Rottweilers, everything. I love, I love them all. Pugs, you name it. Uh, don't really like really small dogs, but yeah. I think Pugs and Corgis are different than those really small dogs. Like, I wouldn't like a Chihuahua to be honest. It's like a, it's like a slightly larger rat. So all that is fun. And unfortunately, he does meet his his idol, his hero, and fortunately, Munz seems to have devolved into a little bit of an evil maniac. And uh, he's trying to get the bird and kill it and then bring it and clear his name. Uh, so he was actually real, he was discredited for nothing. So had he not been discredited by those scientists back then, uh, you know, none of these things would have actually happened. Uh, or at least, the bad things are going to happen. So of course they're trying to escape from them and they do manage. Uh, they get the dogs back. Uh, they get, uh, well, um, at the end of the movie, of course, uh, Kevin is sent back with uh, her kids, her babies. Uh, Carl and uh, Russell manage to reach back to, to the city where they live in. Uh, on the, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, air, on the airship that Munz actually has and uh, Russell gets his assistant living. That's very sweet of a relationship between both of them. That's, uh, I was actually almost tearing up towards the end to be honest. And they they become they become friends and he's, he's able to have a, you know, uh, looking forward to the last years of his life with almost like a grandfather to, to Russell. Uh, uh, that's really sweet to see. And Russell is uh, Chinese or uh, at least Asian uh, in this movie. So, and apparently the boy who, uh, the boy actor who actually voiced him is uh, Chinese origin as well, I guess. Chinese or Japanese. Got in that guy, I, I believe maybe Japanese American. Uh, probably. It doesn't really say. I'll have to check it out somewhere else. Anyway. So yeah, uh, best parts of the movie is that sequence that I saw. First, the, the two 10 year olds meeting up, that was beautiful. Uh, it sounds so sweet. Um, then the, uh, that sweet, the very sad, bittersweet sequence of him becoming a widower, his connection with uh, uh, the young boy, Russell, especially how they go become really close towards the end. Kevin is very funny in itself. Doug is Steen Sailor, best part of the movie for me. And uh, yeah, so apparently the the uh, the uh, the animation of the cartoons of two of two of them, Carl Fredrickson is actually looking a lot like uh, Spencer Tracy from the final from his final movie, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and. Uh, Christopher Plummer's uh, character, Carl Munz, who's the elderly uh, explorer. He, uh, people have noted, I mean, I did too, that he looked a lot like Kirk, Kirk Douglas. So that's actually funny. Uh, yeah, um, so that's basically the movie up. I'll definitely rewatch it multiple times. As far as animated movie goes, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Yep, that high.
Thank you guys.